A good pair of hiking boots are truly special. It takes a, a long time to get rigid boots to be at a point of comfort. They're built to be firm and unforgiving. But over time, you wear them and wear them until a point when they're beautifully broken in. And even one could say comfortable. I wore a lot of different pairs of boots when I was growing up in the Boy Scouts. And because I was growing so fast, I think the only pair I ever had that were truly broken in were the pair that I had to steal from my dad the night before a backpacking trip when I realized that my feet had outgrown my latest pair. And I took the pair of boots that my dad had been breaking in for about a year. So whoops and sorry. But boots are designed to give you strength when you hike, stability in your ankles so you don't roll them, and confidence to step wherever you need to. A good broken-in pair of boots will feel more like an extension of your own body, but with an important purpose. They allow you to not feel the ruggedness of the world around you. You don't think about the flowers or foliage you crush under your feet when you wear boots. Rocks are not sharp. Ice is not cold. Gravel and sticks don't grind your feet when you can march unfeeling and protected through the world. Not really sure why, but it was the image of boots in today's lesson that really captivated me. These words that we hear today from the prophet Isaiah may seem very familiar to you. Perhaps these words of a child who is born to be wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, Prince of Peace, rings on your ears with Christmas cheer. This is commonly a reading offered on Christmas Eve, but I think it has an important place here on Reign of Christ Sunday. I've never really noticed the boots in this reading, as Christmas made me focus so much on the baby. But in the middle, we hear, For all the boots of the tramping warriors, and all the garments rolled in blood, shall be burned as fuel for the fire. These boots that Isaiah references have an important historical context, as they are the boots of the conqueror. The conqueror marches unfeeling and protected through the land, crushing lives and destroying homes as their boots step in time. As we know from our previous weeks of hearing the histories and the prophets of Israel, The united kingdom of Israel was divided in two in 922 BCE with Israel in the north and Judah in the south. From that point on, north and south were constantly at war with one another over issues of theology, norms, and traditions. But more worrisome was that both were under the threat of attack from other nations. Assyria and Babylon to the north and Egypt to the south. The Isaiah that we hear today is considered by historians to be first Isaiah, the prophet who was at work before the Babylonian exile. Isaiah is a very long book, and it continues with a second and possibly even a third Isaiah who is at work among God's people. But this Isaiah who we hear today, his ministry was in the southern kingdom. And at that time, we hear this oracle that we read today, Between 742 and 700 BCE, the northern kingdom began to join forces with the Syrians to remove the king of Judah, Ahaz, in an attempt to keep the Assyrians at bay. So in response, King Ahaz joined with the Assyrians, going so far as to worship their pagan gods. But the Assyrian boots kept marching, and Israel, including the lands of Zebulun and Naphtali that we hear of in the beginning of our reading, were conquered by the Assyrians. While Judah remained independent, it was also under Assyrian control. So with all of this turmoil, with the humiliating and terrifying crunch of boots that marked their defeat, God's people were unsure of their future. It's into this trying time that Isaiah's words offer a reminder of God's continuing care and hope. The people were reminded that God's way for the future would break forth like a great light in the darkness. Now, it's important 
to stop and acknowledge here that in a racialized society unlike the one we live today, historically people have abused this scriptural metaphor. Darkness being bad and light being good is a metaphor that runs throughout scripture, but it's been warped historically to apply to skin color, and that is an egregious misuse of scripture. What we hear today is a deeply contextual metaphor about the uncertainty and fear in the midst of night and the revelation that comes with light. In this ancient world, there was no street lights, no street lights around. Darkness was terrifying, and darkness was deep. In this story, we're, we're talking about even darker than the difference between a Rockingham County darkness and a Harrisonburg City darkness. Night can still be a little scary and uncertain in the shadows downtown, but it's real dark in the country. And for the people of Israel, it's county dark and more at this time. They don't know what is next, and they're scared of the unknown all around them. They're under Assyrian control, and the boots of power are crushing them into subjugation. But God says light is coming into this uncertain time. And we know that light does nothing to change the reality that is all around those who dwell in darkness. It only makes the unknown known. God is present, even in the deep night of fear and uncertainty, and God is faithful to God's people. Isaiah reminds us that in contrast to these these troubled times of shifting rulers, God's reign is coming. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders. God's reign does not come with boots. God's reign comes with baby feet. A light is shining, a fire that consumes the boots of those who march unfeeling and uncaring through this world will illuminate the night of fear. God's reign comes with baby feet calling us back to tender compassion for those around us and for ourselves. God's reign comes with holy curiosity, stepping gently into a brave new world illuminated with love. Even in the times where we cannot see it through the dark, God is with us and God loves us. A child is promised. Christians have read this text to be speaking ahead 700 years to the birth of Christ. Historically, many believe that this text referred to the birth of King Hezekiah, a good king who worked to restore the faith and practices of Israel before the exile. Perhaps both are true and point us to the truth that God's reign is like baby feet far more than unfeeling boots. And perhaps it speaks into our own time as well. God's reign feels the world around it, is connected to it, God's reign does not march in with boots crushing and unbothered by the life all around it. God's reign grows with creation in the ways of peace and justice. God's reign illuminates uncertainty with presence and hope and calls us to join in this way of life. As much as I endorse wearing boots for safety and stability on the trail, we as God's people are not meant to wear boots through life. We're not meant to take violence into our hands and crush those who disagree with us. We are meant to feel and grow with the world around us. We are called to meet our neighbor with tender mercy and recognize the baby feet of another beloved child of God. As we welcome two new siblings into this reign of love this afternoon through the waters of holy baptism, we are reminded that as each of us have been washed in those waters, Our boots of indifference have been washed away as fuel for the light of hope. We have been raised through these waters to walk with new baby feet through a world worth feeling. Now this may mean that the world will hurt us and that we may fall again into uncertain darkness. But God is no less present with us in our hurt and our fear. God is near and is shining hope all around. As the newly baptized are handed a candle, they are reminded, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. 
each of you, has in you the light of hope. You shine this light to illuminate God's presence on all who are hurting or alone. You shine that light to banish your own shadowy despair that lies to you about being unworthy of love. You shine light that consumes the indifferent boots and calls all people to walk in newness of life as children of God. The reign of Christ is here, dear friends. It comes not with a conquering army, but with a revolution of love. Let us burn the boots and don the baby feet of a new creation as we walk together, children of the light. Amen.